Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Vitrune Physique reporting in from beautiful Surfer's Paradise, Gold Coast, Australia. So, in my previous video, I kind of announced that I'm gonna be here, I'm gonna be like, you know, doing a lot of vlogging, a lot of videos, and some of the comments were like, you know, this is great, it's awesome, it's gonna be cool, but, you know, some people were worried that I'm gonna be one of those guys who, that's it, you know, my channel's just, look at me, look at where I am, look at all the cool stuff I have, when in reality, my channel started has always been and in my opinion or at least the way i try to be it always will be based on educating you guys about fitness nutrition um although i try to like you know be funny sometimes and show you the way i live and show the cool stuff that i do because there's so much more to my life than just fitness for example travel Okay, let's try that one more time. So essentially what I wanted to say is that although my channel may involve a multitude of things, on a fundamental level, my goal will always be to educate you guys on how to build a leaner, bigger, stronger, and overall more aesthetic physique, period. So I had a question recently. It was from an individual and he was saying, you know what, Igor, like I've been training for a reasonable amount of time and in the first year or so, I was getting noob gains and it was awesome. Noob gains is when your body is so sensitive to training because it's never done it before, hence you are a newbie. It's your first, you know, six, 12, maybe 18 months of training. And it seems like every time you go to the gym, you're getting bigger, you're getting stronger. It's just like, you know, gains are coming everywhere. But the more you train, the longer you do it, your body gets more and more desensitized to your training. What used to be incredible and new is now, you know, your body's kind of getting accustomed to it and you're no longer getting as crazy gains as you did before. You're no longer able to do as quick progressive overload as you were able to do before. Now, progressive overload, for those of you who don't know, is the fundamental rule, the fundamental tool to getting bigger, and that pretty much comes from increasing your total work capacity. Now, there are two ways to do this. You have to get stronger by increasing the amount of weight that you lift, pushing your body to things it hasn't done before. If you've been benching 225 for three sets of eight for a long time, next time, try pushing for 235. Over time, push to 245. Chances are, you know, nine times out of 10, a stronger muscle is a bigger muscle. The other way of pushing for progressive overload is simply doing more reps. So if you're doing 225 for three sets of eight, keep it up, don't change the weight. This time, push for three sets of 10, three sets of 12. Total work capacity is a function of total reps and weight. They come together. So as long as you increase one of these variables, you are successfully doing progressive overload. So this is where the problem comes in because once you are starting to exit noob gains, me simply saying do more reps or lift more weight, it's easier said than done. This is where other ways to overload the body during exercise come into play, which is the focus of this video. Guys, I'm gonna give you seven tactics which I personally use to overload the target muscle group during a workout in order to make the exercise more difficult and introduce a new stimulus. The hope is that over time, as your muscle adapts and grows in response to this new stimulus, you will grow enough to be able to simply do more weight or do more reps on this target exercise in order to facilitate standard progressive overload. These seven tips will serve as an excellent way to overload your body without simply lifting more weight. The time will come for that, but in the meantime, these will serve as an excellent intermediary. Number one, slow negatives. Okay guys, there are three types of muscle contraction. Number one is concentric contraction, which is pretty much the standard exercise involving the shortening of the target muscle. This is pretty much you know, responsible for 95% of exercises that you guys can think of. Next up, eccentric contraction. This is where the muscle is contracting, but elongating at the same time, which is typically what occurs as you bring the weight down, hence the term negative. Because you guys are not letting the weight simply drop with gravity, you have to add a little bit of a resistance as you lower the weight slowly, and in doing so, you are gonna have to contract your muscles slightly. Although you may not be able to push any more regular concentric reps, by you slowing down and maximizing on the eccentric, you are able to get a lot more out of the exercise without actually doing any more weight or reps. And just as an FYI, the third type of contraction is isometric, in which the muscle contracts but does not shorten or elongate. An example of this would be ab planks. Guys, number two is additional contraction. So bodybuilding is all about time under tension. This is probably one of the most important terminologies or concepts that you guys could learn when it comes to developing your physique. So definitely, if you take one thing away from this video, it's time under tension. You exercise the target muscle group by putting it under strain against a resistance, aka the weight. This combination of time under tension and the degree of physical resistance, aka the weight, is what causes hypertrophy. In fact, guys, in case you're wondering, you know, whether or not time under tension is kind of bro science, a study actually tested how important this is, assuming the weight lifted is the exact same. 
So there was a study done back in 2012. Our researchers had eight men perform leg extensions one leg at a time with the exact same amount of weight. Participants were asked to hold contraction for six seconds in one leg and only one second in the other leg. Afterwards, needle biopsies were obtained and levels of post-exercise muscle protein synthesis were measured to be about 114% in the 6 second contraction leg and only 77% in the 1 second contraction leg. Over 24 hours later, pretty much the next day after exercise, protein synthesis was still elevated in the 6 second contraction group by almost 50%. The results show that despite the actual resistance or weight being identical, increased time under tension did lead to significantly increased muscle protein synthesis and therefore gains. Number three is drop sets. So after you've taken your set, you know, to more or less failure, you can quickly drop the weight by about 20 to 30% and perform an additional four or five or however many reps you can. The reason behind this is because as you start to approach failure, you may be unable to proceed at the current weight without severely compromising your form, which is both dangerous and inefficient because you're no longer stimulating specifically the target muscle group. You know what I'm talking about. For example, if you did 10 reps, and this represented, you know, theoretically 95% of your maximum work capacity, by you executing a few additional reps at a lighter weight, you were still able to increase total work capacity and get closer and closer, you know, closing the gap towards 100%. Personally, I have even done continuous drop sets. For example, on the lateral dumbbell raise, I would start with 30s, you know, do my set, you know, 10, 12, whatever reps. Drop to 25s and do a few more reps. Drop to 20s do another few reps. And I would literally keep on going successively decreasing the weight until I'm standing there, you know, gritting my teeth looking like Arnold, even though I'm holding, you know, those two pounders you see the old ladies use at the Aquafit classes. Number four, spotted reps. So if you're training with a spotter, once you're approaching the end of a set and you're reaching a rep number where you're unsure if you can continue, go for an additional two to three reps with your spotter adding a little bit of force. The reasoning behind this is almost the exact same premise as with drop sets where you were able to push closer and closer towards 100% work capacity. However, in some ways it's even better because unlike a drop set where you have to stop whatever exercise you're doing, get up, find a lighter weight, sit back down and continue, your spotter is able to help you with additional force immediately, thus cutting down the time significantly. That being said guys, take this with a grain of salt. For example, let's say you're on the bench press the spotter should be adding something in the range of, you know, 20 to 30 pounds of additional force production. If your spotter is standing there being forced to deadlift 225 pounds off your chest, your set is over. Number five, reverse pyramid style training. So instead of you doing the standard weight and set structure where individuals stay at the exact same weight for all X sets, you increase the weight on your first set and then progressively decrease the weight for your subsequent sets. This method is especially popular amongst individuals who believe in high intensity training and the notion of quality over quantity. Instead of having a somewhat uniform and linear weight distribution over your workout, you end up with a somewhat skewed set structure allowing for one set to be significantly higher than had you spread the weight and force production evenly. Guys, personally, I use a combination of both uniform and reverse pyramid style training. Occasionally using reverse pyramids on, you know, like heavy days for a few heavy compound exercises to push the target muscle group to a limit, focusing more maximal force production as opposed to simply training for endurance where you're trying to do the exact same weight for, you know, all four or five, whatever sets. Number six, exercise tweaks. These are changes you can make to standard exercise form in order to make the exercise more challenging and potentially stimulate a certain segment of the target muscle group. For example, on the squat, if you stand with a slightly narrower stance and your feet pointed straight ahead, this will target the outer quad or vastus lateralis, helping you isolate and develop that infamous quad sweep. So theoretically, even though you are still doing the standard squat, by you doing this, you are able to make the exercise significantly more difficult and significantly more targeted towards a certain segment of the muscle group. Another example of this would be barbell bicep curls, where different hand placements are going to affect different segments of the bicep, with closer hand placement affecting and specifically targeting your outer biceps, and wider hand placement is going to specifically affect your inner biceps a little bit more. And finally guys, number seven, creatine and or pre-workout supplements. So this one, sometimes it can be a little bit controversial because some people out there may discredit supplements because they think it's not actually you lifting the weights and the supplement is somewhat doing the work for you. However, in my opinion, that doesn't matter. It is always you lifting the weights and providing the force. Supplements simply help facilitate this. 
In the case of creatine, it simply increases ATP production, which temporarily and very slightly increases available energy. And in the case of most pre-workout supplements, it is simply caffeine stimulating your central nervous system. Since it is still you doing the work, which happens to be slightly increased due to supplements helping you perform, you are able to reap the rewards as your performance takes a slight boost. Again, increased work capacity, no matter what the cause is, is going to lead to an improvement in your physique. Personally, my go-to is my protein strawberry flavored creatine monohydrate and my pre-pre-workout supplement. As always, just in case you guys are interested, you can always use the link and promo code in this video description to get 20% off your order. So guys, that's it. Seven ways to overload your workout without actually having to simply lift more weight. I recommend you give these a try and try to incorporate some of these into your workout and keep at it until you're ready to increase the weight and reap the sweet, sweet rewards of standard progressive overload. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you guys for stopping by. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments. If you learned something new with this video, leave it a like, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Okay, let's try that one more time. So essentially what I wanted to say is that although my channel may involve a multitude of things, on a fundamental level, my goal will always be to educate you guys on how to build a leaner, bigger, stronger, and overall more aesthetic physique, period. So I had a question recently. It was from an individual and he was saying, you know what, Igor, like I've been training for a reasonable amount of time. And in the first year or so, I was getting noob gains and it was awesome. Noob gains is when your body is so sensitive to training because it's never done it before. Hence, you are a newbie. It's your first, you know, six, 12, maybe 18 months of training. And it seems like every time you go to the gym, you're getting bigger, you're getting stronger. It's just like, you know, gains are coming everywhere. But the more you train, the longer you do it, your body gets more and more desensitized. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Vitrune Physique reporting in from beautiful Surfers Paradise, Gold Coast, Australia. So, in my previous video, I kind of announced I'm gonna be here, I'm gonna be like, you know, doing a lot of vlogging, a lot of videos, and some of the comments were like, you know, this is great, it's awesome, it's gonna be cool, but, you know, some people were worried that I'm gonna be one of those guys who, that's it, you know, my channel is just, look at me, look at where I am, look at all the cool stuff I have, when in reality, my channel started has always been, and in my opinion, or at least the way I try to be, it always will be based on educating you guys about fitness, nutrition. Um, although I try to like, you know, be funny sometimes and show you the way I live and show the cool stuff that I do because there's so much more to my life than just fitness. For example, travel. As your muscle adapts and grows in response to this new stimulus, you will grow enough to be able to simply do more weight or do more reps on this target exercise in order to facilitate standard progressive overload. These seven tips will serve as an excellent way to overload your body without simply lifting more weight. The time will come for that, but in the meantime, these will serve as an excellent intermediary. Number one, slow negatives. Okay guys, there are three types of muscle contraction. Number one is concentric contraction, which is pretty much the standard exercise involving the shortening of the target muscle. This is pretty much you know, responsible for 95% of exercises that you guys can think of. Next up, eccentric contraction. You're training what used to be incredible and new is now, you know, your body's kind of getting accustomed to it and you're no longer getting as crazy gains as you did before. You're no longer able to do as quick progressive overload as you were able to do before. Now, progressive overload, for those of you who don't know, is the fundamental rule, the fundamental tool to getting bigger, and that pretty much comes from increasing your total work capacity. Now, there are two ways to do this. You have to get stronger by increasing the amount of weight that you lift, pushing your body to things it hasn't done before. If you've been benching 225 for three sets of eight for a long time, next time, try pushing for 235. Over time, push to 245. Chances are, you know, nine times out of 10, a stronger muscle is a bigger muscle. The other way of pushing for progressive overload is simply doing more reps. So if you're doing 225 for three sets of eight, keep it up, don't change the weight. This time push for three sets of 10, three sets of 12. Total work capacity is a function of total reps and weight. They come together. So as long as you increase one of these variables, you are successfully doing progressive overload. So this is where the problem comes in because once you are starting to exit noob gains, me simply saying do more reps or lift more weight, it's easier said than done. This is where other ways to overload the body during exercise come into play, which is the focus of this video. Guys, I'm gonna give you seven tactics which I personally use to overload the target muscle group during a workout in order to make the exercise more difficult and introduce a new stimulus. The hope is that over time, 